Hi, I'm Katie Fahey, the writer of Positives, and this is my table reading. Uh, Positives is a series based in New York City where each episode is focused on a woman from a different background, uh, the moment after she finds out she's pregnant and they have to decide what to do next. This is the first episode, the pilot episode, which focuses on Alex, who's a white woman in her 30s. She's a high school math teacher. Um, and episodes two through six focus on women from different backgrounds. And in episodes seven and eight, we see that their lives intersect and intertwine in unexpected ways. The only thing you need to know about what we're about to read is that this is around page 13. So what you've missed is that Alex has rushed to school, gotten hangover supplies at CVS, and she grabbed a pregnancy test on her way out as well. She took a pregnancy test in the handicapped bathroom and it is positive. It's also important to note that there are a lot of blurred lines between fantasy and reality, which will be made clear through narration, but it can be a little hard to keep track of. But in dealing with this news, she's kind of drifting out into flashbacks, fantasies, nightmares, and just getting to the doctor's office. Interior, Alex's classroom. Alex has made it to her desk and in this moment knocks over a mug full of pens and pencils. Kids look in her direction, startled. Alex makes an awkward act face. <sighs> Sorry guys, struggle bus this morning. I'm driving it. <laughs> are over it, adults are weird and get back to work quickly. Alex sits behind her desk. Jalen looks up around the room and then at her, not for any reason, just because that is what kids do during pop quizzes. She musters a tight, toothless smile and shuffles things around on her desk to avoid another trigger into the past. Interior, Alex's classroom, end of class. Once the room is empty of kids, she closes the door and rushes to her desk. She sits down, gets out her phone, and she scrolls to Dr. Yang in her contacts. She clicks call. Yes. Hi. Um, I have a bit of an emergency uh, and was wondering if Dr. Yang had any availability this afternoon. Interior hallway, New York City Public School. Alex walks down the hall with purpose and stops at the classroom belonging to Matt, fellow math teacher. Matt is at the table tutoring two students. Interior hey. Matt's classroom. Hey, Matt. Hey, what's up? I have to miss department meeting this afternoon because my dentist finally has an opening. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, sure. We're not going over the rubrics again or anything, right? Uh, no, no, I'm sure it'll be more of the same stuff. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Good luck with the teeth. Oh. <laughs> Interior hallway, New York City Public School. Alex walks back in the direction of her room. On the opposite side of the hallway, Benny works with a few students in her classroom. Alex picks up her pace and avoids eye contact with anyone in the room so she won't have to tell Benny what's up or lie to Benny about what's up again. Exterior, 57th Street, 6th Avenue, afternoon. Alex is hustling to the Q train to get to her doctor on the Upper East Side. It's cold out for March, so she has a scarf around her neck and a light jacket. A woman with a baby in a stroller approaches her from the opposite direction. The woman is pretty nondescript for NYC. Alex locks her gaze on the baby. The baby is eight months old, wearing a pink cotton knit hat and has a blanket with elephants covering her lower body. Alex's eyes follow them and she turns her head to continue looking at them after they pass. Exterior, Prospect Park West, Saturday daytime fantasy. And now Alex is the one pushing the baby in the stroller and it's a nice spring day in Brooklyn. She removes her scarf, too warm out for that. The season is feeling more solidly like spring every day. Alex is pointing out little things to her baby here and there, even if she can't hear the baby's responses. She rolls up to a green area where her friends, Claire and Jen, are sitting with their kids. They're sitting on blankets, each bopping their babies up and down on their knees. There are some snacks scattered about. Alex picks up her baby from the stroller and sits down on the part of the blanket with her legs crossed and her baby sitting across them. Happy parenting club montage fantasy. The women laugh together as they all sit facing each other with their babies. Alex's baby spits up, but she handles it with aplomb. She rolls her eyes and fishes out a small towel from her stroller storage basket. She wipes it up good humored about this shitty shit. Additional montage scenes roll by. 
Alex lays her baby down on the stroller to sleep and creeps away exaggeratedly so as not to disturb. Claire hands her a small glass of rosé and Alex sits down. They all cheers. Claire makes them pose to take a selfie together, sitting down on the blankets. End montage. Exterior Prospect Park, Fantasy. Alex, Claire, and Jen are chatting post cheers, though nothing specific is heard. Alex? Alex? She turns away from the picnic and sees Malcolm, a dude she met at a bar God knows when. The light pulses as it did in her classroom. The camera zooms closely in on his face. He smiles. Interior, Alex's bedroom, flashback. Alex's point of view. A purple light radiates in the room behind the darkness. She watches Malcolm get up from the bed and walk naked to the bathroom. When he gets to the bathroom door, he turns his head to look at her, but his face is just darkness. End fantasy and flashback. Interior, Q train, afternoon. Alex is sitting down and the train jerks its way between stops, snapping her back into the present. Alex's phone is vibrating. She has two texts from Benny. Do we know? Positive or negative? Skipping fact meeting? You okay? Telling the father? Crying laughing emoji? Well, she hasn't taken it yet. And yes, last minute dentist. Puke emoji. Uh. Exterior East 76th Street off of 5th Avenue. Alex walks down the sidewalk and turns right into a building. Interior, Dr. Yang's office. Alex approaches the receptionist. Hi, I'm here for Dr. Yang. Alex? All right, you can sit right down and she'll be with you soon, okay? Thanks, and thank you so much for squeezing me in. Alex walks to the waiting area where there is a very pregnant woman sitting and reading a magazine. They exchange smiles as Alex sits in a burnt orange armchair. Alex takes off her scarf and jacket. She can't help but keep looking at the woman. She knows the woman probably fucking hates this, but she goes for it anyway. How far along are you? 28 weeks. Oh, that's great. Congrats. Are you? Oh, no. Well, not sure yet, but maybe. Well then. Good luck. Thanks. You too. Alex relaxes a little bit, feeling like perhaps she could fit into this mom's club. She takes out her phone and opens Instagram. As she scrolls, she sees an ad for a children's book about racism. Get out of my head, Instagram. Still, she clicks on the ad and the page takes a minute to load. Interior apartment, Brooklyn, daytime, fantasy. The lineup of anti-racism books pops up on her phone screen. We already have all of these. Shot from screen onto Alex, who's sitting on a couch in sweats, her hair in a messy top knot. She looks towards the floor where there is a baby playing in its gym. There's a baby bottle resting on the coffee table, a pile of onesies folded at the end of the couch, and small baby toys scattered about. The phone buzzes, and she swipes to see. Shot of a whole chain on her phone, which started with Alex prompting the group, whose name is Hot Mamas. Anyone want to explore the Coney Island boardwalk or something? Jen. Can't. Going to visit the in-laws in Jersey. Mora. Nora woke up with a fever, so we're at the doctor's. Sobbing emoji. Claire. Getting our Xmas card shot today. Going great so far. Claire has sent a photo that shows a chaotic family portrait. Alex's baby cries, and when she turns around to attention, she finds a completely changed room. Her fantasy is taking a turn to something else. It is now nighttime. Her baby has disappeared. The apartment looks the same, but debabied. Alex is dressed to go out, wearing jeans, heeled booties, a destroyed sweatshirt. Her hair is nicely blown out. Her phone buzzes, and she swipes to read the newest text on her screen. Lindsay. We're taking shots! Where are you at? <laughs> Interior, bar, Williamsburg, fantasy. The combination of music playing and talking over the music makes the bar uncomfortably loud. Alex and Lindsay are at the bar laughing. The bartender leans across the bar towards them. Alex reaches over to squeeze his shoulder, flirting. Female bartender, Angie, sees this and rolls her eyes. She sees this shit all the time. 
Alex's point of view, time lapse. She's dancing, moving around the bar, drinking, shots, smokes a cigarette outside, goes to the bathroom, does a bump, comes back out, and more of the same. Although things are moving fast, the number of people slowly dwindles around her as it continues. Alex's ability to stand and move effectively also diminishes, even when she's standing right next to the bar and using it for balance. And time lapse. Exterior sidewalk, Williamsburg, fantasy. Still Alex's point of view. She walks out the door of the bar onto the street. Angie and another guy are smoking outside. The bartender smiles at her and gives her a hug. Alex watches Angie say goodbye and walk away. Alex turns towards the bartender and she can't hear what he says, but his lips are readable. Want to come back? Yeah, come back. The following cuts are supposed to simulate her blacking out and remembering only small moments. Cut to black. Exterior sidewalk, Williamsburg. She looks to her left and she's linked arms with the bartender. His mouth moves, but no sound comes out. Cut to black. Interior bartender's bedroom. Darkness with a Himalayan salt lamp color in the background. The bartender, now just a shadow, moves down her body. Cut to black. Interior bartender's bedroom, the next morning, fantasy. Close up of Alex sleeping, hungover, smushed face. She rolls over and sees a post-it note on the sheets in the empty space next to her. Last night was fun. Call me, 545-0973. She does a body check and realizes she's totally naked. She grabs her phone off the floor next to her and sees she has a few texts, one of them from the bartender. She doesn't open it, but instead opens a text from Lindsay. Oof, 4 a.m. McDonald's was a bad choice. Impossible. You go home with the barkeep? Affirmative. He left already though. I need to get out of here. I'm still in Williamsburg, crying face. Hey, remember last week when you were considering having a baby? <laughs> LOL, LOL. Love. I know, right? LOL. She sighs and lies back down, closes her eyes, a fantasy. Alexandra? Interior waiting room, Dr. Yang's office. Alexandra? Follow me. Alex picks up her stuff and walks towards the nurse. The very pregnant lady isn't there anymore. Interior exam room, Dr. Yang's office. Okay, so you took a pregnancy test. Yeah, and it was positive. I, I don't know how because I'm on birth control, but it really freaked me out. You are on birth control. Okay. So you've been feeling different lately. Why did you take the test? Oh, I just, I, I don't get my period because of birth control. So sometimes I get anxious and, and take a test to make sure for my conscience. Okay. So we're just confirming the test. Mm -hmm. And do you know what you're going to do? Um, I mean, it's just, I'll have to make a decision, I guess. The nurse prepares the needle and vial and walks over to Alex. Alex holds out her arm. The nurse ties a rubber band around her forearm and Alex squeezes her fist to get some veins going. Okay, okay. You don't have to make a fist anymore. Oh, okay. The blood fills up the vial. The nurse takes out the needle and throws it away. The nurse returns and stretches a Band-Aid on top of the gauze on Alex's arm. Thank you. So it'll be only about 20 minutes because we're doing it in-house. Do you wanna to go to the waiting area to be more comfortable? Yeah, sure, great. Thank you. Interior waiting room, Dr. Yang's office. Alex walks into the waiting area and thank God the very pregnant lady isn't there. The last thing she wants to do is make a conversation as she waits for life-changing news. She sits in the same chair she did before. She closes her eyes and lets her head fall back against the wall behind her chair for a moment. She takes out her phone and sees a few notifications. Bumble, a text from Eli, four aces, martini, beer, champagne emojis, and a text from Lindsay. She opens Eli's text. I'm stopping by tonight. It's a school night? Thursday is the new Saturday. Goofy face with tongue out emoji. I'll hook you up. Alex sighs, frustrating by this tempting suggestion. She goes back into her messages and opens the text from Lindsay. So I'm going on a fourth date with Josh tonight. Should I ask him to DTR? 
She doesn't write back and goes to her Bumble account instead, looking at the newest message from a guy named Scott, shot of their conversation. What's the last place you ordered takeout from? Pizza, burger, chicken wing, donut emoji? Joe's Pizza, the best. He doesn't ask a question. Great. She starts to write back, then deletes it. Then she goes to her profile. There are four pictures. In each one, she looks pretty, funny, confident. Nurse fantasy starts here. Alexandra? Alex gets up and awkwardly holds all of her belongings as she walks to the nurse. In this sequence, the camera will be on the nurse's face when the nurse speaks, followed by a sharp cut to show Alex's face in reaction to what the nurse says. You're pregnant. You're not pregnant. You can't have children. You have cancer. You're having, I've just never seen anything like this before. Bitch, you are not pregnant, dumbass. Can't even read a test. You are pregnant and man, this is just wrong. Do you even know who the father is? Now the shot stays on the nurse. You don't even know, right? <laughs> you don't even know who you had sex with last weekend, do you? <laughs> you probably did though. Letting boys fuck you and not even enjoying it. I mean, fuck, not even remembering it. Oh, was it? with that bartender you want to fuck and why you want to go fuck another bartender when you know he's going to ghost. <laughs> and you sit here thinking about being a mother when, how you going to be a mother when you don't even know who the kid's father is? How's your mother going to handle this? Oh, I don't know, mom. I think I had sex with Tom or Dick or, Harry, but I'm not sure. Are you stupid? Hello? Are you stupid? Yes or no? Shot finally cuts to Alex's face, which shows she's been crying. Yes. End fantasy. Interior waiting room, Dr. Yang's office. Alexandra? Shot of Alex's face. She is still sitting in the waiting area, waiting for her results. She looks straight into nothing, and her face looks the same as it did in the fantasy. Drenched with tears, covered in mascara, red cheeks, puffy eyes, cut to black. 